I have built two identical forms, both use Angular's reactive forms, but only one of them is really reactive. This first form was coded using an imperative style of coding, and the second form was coded using a reactive style of coding. The key feature of these forms that complicates things is that we need to wait for some data to be loaded in order to pre-fill this form with values. We're going to take a look at the imperative form first, and then I'm going to show you a little trick you can use with the async pipe to help make your components more reactive in a lot of different situations. So if you aren't familiar with the terms imperative and reactive or declarative, I will link to some resources in the description for you to check out. It's a subtle difference to understand, but in short, you might think of imperative coding as you manually controlling and directing the data flow in your application. This is sort of the most natural and normal way to think about programming. But with reactive or declarative coding, we set up the data flow such that our components can just react to changing data streams automatically. So this is the imperatively coded form. And I think this is a very intuitive way to code this solution. It still uses observables, which is a big part of coding reactively. But just because we use an observable, it doesn't necessarily make our code reactive. This is an oversimplification, but a good indicator that we might not be coding reactively is that we are manually subscribing to things. So we have our form defined, and then we subscribe to this observable that gets the user data for us. So we can take a look at the get user method. So this uses a behavior subject that is initially null, and then we use a set timeout to emit data on the stream after two seconds to simulate it taking some time to load. And we also filter out the null values here. So this observable will only emit when it actually has the user data. And I'll link to an additional video if you want more information on using behavior subject specifically. So since we are manually subscribing to this observable, we make sure we are also unsubscribing. In this case, we do that by just taking one value from the stream. And so we take that data from the stream, set those values on the form, and we also toggle a loading flag. And this flag is what is going to control displaying or hiding our little loading animation with the uh, skeleton text component. And I'm using this little technique here with ng if and ng template to handle showing and hiding this. Again, if you want more information on how this works, I will link to another video for that as well. Now this code isn't bad. This is a perfectly fine way to achieve this and it is probably a very common way to do it. But how do we make this more reactive? As I mentioned, a key part to coding reactively is not manually subscribing to observable streams and manually controlling where that data needs to flow. We typically avoid manually subscribing by using the async pipe in the template to subscribe to the streams for us. And again, if you're not familiar with the concept of using the async pipe, I'll link to another video on that that you can check out. And so using the async pipe in the template is fine if you just want to display data from an observable in the template, but we are executing some extra logic in the class here. But with this setup, there is no way for us to access the data from an async pipe in the template inside this class. But with a little refactoring, we can achieve what we want. So if we take a look at the reactive page now, we can see that the page itself is quite a lot simpler. We just get our user observable. And then in the template, we use the async pipe to get the data out of that observable. And the key part to making this work is the custom component we have created here, app my form, to display the form for us. So if we use an ng if, it will only render this component when we have uh, data from the observable available. And then we just pass that data from the observable in as an input to that component. So now let's take a look at that custom component. The template is basically just the form copy and pasted from our other template. And all we do in the component is take the input that is given to the component 
and we set the form values to whatever that data was. Now, an important thing to keep in mind here is that we are just setting these values once. We just want some initial values for these forms. But if we wanted the observable to be able to emit new bits of data and have our component react to those data changes as it's being passed in as an input, then we would just do something like using ng on changes instead of ng on init. So this component doesn't need to worry about observables. It gets its input data just as normal synchronous data. It doesn't even know the observable exists. Our async pipe handles pulling that data out of the stream and passing it into our form component through the template. And that's an important part here. Remember that with the async pipe, we can't get that data out of the template and into our class, but we can pass it through the template into another component and it will be available in that components class. And although I'm not doing it here, we could also handle uh, form submissions by adding an output event to this component as well. And then we could just listen for that event up in our reactive page. So we have two identical solutions here, at least in terms of their functionality. Uh, it's just achieved in two different ways. So is there any benefit to the reactive approach here or are we just flexing our Angular skills for no reason? I think there is a benefit here. There are the general benefits of coding reactively, which I won't rehash here, but let's just focus on the specifics of this example. I think the key benefits are that we don't need to manually handle subscriptions. We don't need to manually control a loading flag. It allows us to use the on push change detection strategy to increase performance by decreasing the amount of nodes Angular needs to check in change detection cycles. That one's a bit more of an advanced point, so I'll link to some more resources for that um, that you can check out if you want more information. And it also allows us to make the code more organized and modular. And although we have looked at a very specific example here, this technique of passing data to a child component using the async pipe can be used in many different scenarios. And a good indicator for where you might want to use it is the kind of situation where you're using the async pipe, but you discover that you need to use the data in the observable stream in your class in some way. So in that case, you could refactor it into its own component and just pass the data through the template. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.